How can you take information from two separate tables, combine them together, and create a running total? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So on the screen, you can see that we have got the code and the output of two tables, an incoming table and an outgoing table. And we have got a date transaction column and an amount. And we've got them for January 2023, February and March. What I want as an output is a single query which has the date transaction, so January, February and March, the incoming amounts, outgoing amounts, the balance for today, so the incoming minus the outgoing, and the overall balance, a running total. So if you'd like to do this as a practice activity, then please have a look at the description to this video where you can have a copy of this code. However, I do want to add one level of difficulty if you're doing this as a practice activity. What if there are more than one row in the same table with the same date? Good luck. Right, so let's see how we can do this. So we've got these two different select queries and I want to combine them together. Now I could have a union, so that would allow me to put one underneath the other, as it were. Now you might want to use a union all instead of a union. A union would remove duplicate transactions, whereas a union all would include them. So here we have got in one query, both incoming and outgoing. And then I'll probably have incoming as a string and outgoing as a string. So that is one possible way of doing this and then manipulate the data from there. So let's go down this route and say, okay, I want date transaction and the amount. And then for the outgoing, I also want date transaction, but I want the negative amount. And I don't really need to alias it because this is a union and it will take the names of the first query. So this then combines the two together. And what I can do now is I can do a group by. So group by the date transaction. So if I have this as a CTE, as a common table expression, so with my table as, and in brackets put that. So the advantage of doing this is it just simplifies things because I can now say select star from my table. And this is a standalone query. So I can run that and then I can run this as well. So you can see no column name was specified for column three of my table. So that's incoming and out going. So I don't know that I technically need that now. So I'll just delete it. Otherwise I'll just put an alias there. So what I need to do now is to group it. So I can say date transaction and amount. And I will group by date transaction. So what I need to have is anything that is not grouped as an aggregation. So a sum in this case. So I'm going to sum amount as total amount. So if I run this now, then we now just have the one line for February 2023, which is 100 minus 30. Now this is fairly flexible. If I was to now add an extra row, for instance here, I'm adding an extra row with February 2023 and run this then because it is a union, it's just going to add all of the amounts together. So let's just have a look at this first query. So we can see now we've got three different amounts for February. It's just going to group them all together and give the answer of 100 plus 50 minus 30, making 120. So that's great. That is my difference. Now I wanted an incoming amount and an outgoing amount. So how can I do that? Well, I just have this amount 
as a second column. So here we have an additional column. So there is amount and that's going to be incoming amount. And then I'm going to have amount as outgoing amount. But hang on, I'm using the same column for each. Well, that's no problem. I just need to have incoming amount in one column, outgoing amount in another. So therefore I will put a null. And that gives us a bit of a space, a gap. So we have for the incoming amounts, the amount here and a null here. For outgoing amounts, we have a null first and then the outgoing amount there. So if I run this as a standalone, you can now see that we've got the incoming amounts and the outgoing amounts separated together with a running total. And I will alias this as the balance today. So if I run that, there we can see the balance today and the incoming amounts and the outgoing amounts. So now in my outer select query, I want to sum together the incoming amounts and we can call that incoming amount. I also want the outgoing amount. And I also want to sum the balance today. So let's execute that. And now we can see the total of the incoming amounts and the total of the outgoing amounts separately, and then the balance today. So we've done everything we wanted, except for one thing. I want to have a running total. Now it's only slightly difficult to set up. And the first thing I need to do is to put this, because there's all these aggregations and group buys into another CTE. So I'm going to say comma, my table two as. Now you can name them better if you would like. You can name them, this is the first stage, second stage and so forth. So select star from my table two. And if I run that, we should see no changes. So this just allows me to add something extra. I'm going to add another sum of balance today. And then we have a keyword. The keyword here is over. So over means we're not just doing it on one row. We're doing it over a window as it's called. So here we've got February 2023. I want it to be over the entirety from the beginning to February 2023. And this can be done quite easily, just as long as I don't know what order I want it to be done by. Here I want it to be ordered by the date transaction. So I will say order by date transaction. And I'll just give it a running total alias. So let's run that. And you can see that we now have a running total. So in the first line January, we have 50. Second, we add 120 to make 170. And the third, we subtract 25 to make 145. Now also notice something pretty odd. We have not had to do any group by yet we have got this aggregation. We've got a sum, but hang on. If we use a sum or count or min or max, that's an aggregation. Don't we therefore need to use group by for anything that is not grouped? And the answer is normally yes. However, when we do this over, we are not saying we want you to group things together. We're saying we want you to do for every single row, this calculation. And therefore it is not a true aggregation. It is a sum, but it is a sum over a particular window and then give me the answer for that particular row and then do this for each row. So we don't need a group by. So what we have done in this video is built up bit by bit this answer. So we started off with a query which we can still run by itself put it into a CTE so that it temporarily saves it just for this one query as my table. We created a second CTE and then we created a window function from that. So we built it up at individual stages. Now, if any of this seems a bit advanced, 
if you're going, yes, I can do one particular step, but this next one, I need more details, then I hope you'll consider looking at my course on querying Microsoft SQL with TSQL. So in this nearly 30 hour course, we have a look at the union. So we're combining data sets. We have a look at the implement aggregate queries. So we're looking at the over and some things that we haven't looked at in this video, partition by and order by and the rows between and current row and unbounded. And also we have a look at the with. So we create our own CTE statements, including self joins and recursive CTEs. And there are plenty of quizzes as we go along. So you can be sure that you are learning. If this course sounds of interest to you, then there is a link to it in the description to this YouTube video. Incidentally, if you're thinking, is that the only way that we can do this query? Nope, there's more than one way. And we'll have a look at another way in the next video. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, then please click the like and why not click subscribe and click that bell. So you'll be notified of any new videos, including part two of this video, where we have a look at exactly the same problem, but solve it using a different method. Please have a look at my course if I can help you further with WIFs, CTEs and window functions. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.